The Earnestly Speaking Podcast is a show that is founded on free-flowing conversation and may at times venture into mature subjects. Listener discretion is advised. The first five, you know, podcast. Oh, uh, friend, Ray, Raldi. What's up? What's going on? I'm and staring at the, I'm staring at the <laughs> Skype right now, and in, in that, that picture of you and the, uh, you know, those glasses that we've been going back and forth on for the last like six, seven years. I know that's so that is so 2015, right? So, so have you still, <laughs> you ask questions, you still have those glasses? Uh, so I didn't tell my friend about this yet, but those glasses broke like uh, last year. <laughs> Really? Yeah, the the um the handle kind of broke, but I bought like two more pairs of sunglasses just so I could make up for it. So just like it, <laughs> one's just like it. The other was a little bit smaller because I got to get a Rosalind and Ross uh, last January. I wore the I wore the smaller ones, and she noticed okay. it too. She noticed it. It's like those are not the same glasses. I'm like, yeah, you're right. These are the, these are the smaller ones, but I have one just like it back home. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the 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 conversation of the of the glasses uh, dominated a lot of our podcasts. Um, I know. 15, 2016. Yeah, just keep wearing it. It's all, it's all good though. It's all good. Anyway, it's a, um, it's a signature thing. Yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, so <laughs> interesting week. Sports is back this week. Well, sort of. I mean, baseball came kind back. Kind of. This, yeah, sort of. Um, but you know, I want to start here with you know our conversation. See, seems like now that. Ever since I got I, I got back to watching re- wrestling in this current form the last uh, year or so, that mm. the, the last couple podcasts you've been on the show we've been talking about wrestling a lot, you know, yes. and especially because you you are still a big fan. Um, yeah. Uh, let's start with AEW first. Um, how how you like AEW so far? I I I I heard someone made this comparison uh, recently, but um, it's like the glory days of Monday Nitro. Mm-hmm. Like it feels so different, it feels so fresh, and I'm hoping it doesn't go the way of Nitro at its at the end of it, <laughs> you know, when they just started making nonsensical storylines. But um, yeah, it feels fresh. There's new talent. Everyone feels like a star the way they've been handled, mm-hmm. and the storylines make sense. So I I'm all for it. And of course, um, unlike WWE, they embrace stables. I like stables in my oh lesson, yeah, me too. So, I'm I'm yeah. I am big on factions, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, by the way, we keep up and I. Hard to agree with you, I, and I'm not not for the obvious reasons about you know the comparisons to you know in Nitro because of Tony Giovanni being there and all that. Yes, but yes. It is there is you know a feel there is it's different. It's more adult than what WWE is doing currently. Yeah. It has been for the last decade or so. Mm-hmm. Um, it, I'm not saying it's actually error ish, although they do have cussing in here now. You, they 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 do they use the word asshole and shit and <laughs> fingers. Yes, they do. Yeah, yeah. I mean Jericho is, is, is part of the number one guy with that. Um, yeah. But, you know, it's funny, like, we're now almost a year um, from the start of the um, other of Dynamite, you know, October be a year. And, you know, it's funny, like, we it sort of happened in a year already, the ebbs and flows of the, of the company. I got to say 2020 right now, to be honest with you, outside the coronavirus situation and them having to, you know, do the show, the daily, you know, uh, crowds, they have actually really adjusted well with, with, the, with the pandemic, they have, and they're and the thing is, it's like they're not making us feel feel like idiots. It's like they know there's a pandemic going on, mm-hmm. so they're adjusting to they're adjusting to whatever's going on. Um, and they test every single week, every single day, whatever. Um, at first, I was a little, um, I had a little trepidation about it because obviously the coronavirus it spreads pretty easily, but they've had very few positive tests so far, mm-hmm. and it's working well because. Um, we, we talk about the WNBA and NBA bubbles, right? Mm-hmm. But there's a lot fewer people in wrestling than NBA and WNBA. Mm-hmm. So it's easier to work with work with that group. Uh, so, yeah, and again, it's like uh, Tony Khan is a noted wrestling fan, a noted wrestling maniac, basically. Yeah. And uh, he knows everything that's been going on. And he's putting out what he thinks that make, makes sense and what the fans like. So he's cognizant of what's going on with the fans. Um, unlike the other wrestling company right now, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, it's it's been such a fun ride so far, and I cannot say that there is there has been a bad dynamite show yet. 
No, I, I had maybe one show where I was like, eh, not as good as before, but not one bad show. I haven't missed an episode since it started. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, if, to me, AEW is, is, has been is actually my number one priority when it comes to wrestling shows before anything, before NXT, before SmackDown, yes. you know, yes. Raw, you, know, you name it. It's, I, mm-hmm. I, I am you know, AEW first. Mm-hmm. Um, now, um, the one thing I will say that's still been it's still been an issue for the uh, for the company has been their women's division. Um, yeah. But I will say this much, and maybe you agree with me on this as well too. I do think um, it's starting to make some really small headway, small progress. Long way to go. Obviously, nowhere in the ballpark of any company right now in in pro wrestling. But I will say the women's division right now has finally, at the very least, has made some progress in recent uh, recent uh, weeks. Britt Baker has been one of the best heels in wrestling. In- mainstream wrestling today i agree like she's amazing and i guess we should have seen it coming being the girlfriend of adam cole and we know adam cole's an amazing heel so yeah (laughs) i know i should say that every time i say that name um (laughs) but but, um the thing is they should show more of sheeta she can speak she can speak english pretty well Mm -hmm. um they should they should do more promos for nyla rose she's she's an amazing wrestler um she they should just uh have two matches per I know, I know they get a lot of time on dark, but we need to show these women on TV. And they have they have an amazing depth. I think I believe really they have like 15 women wrestlers signed right now, probably more than that. But they should show them more on TV. And I understand it's hard to do it on a two hour show. And they have a second hour. They have a second show coming up uh, probably later this year. But yeah. they need they need more time on TV. I agree. Yeah. Um, I think they're, they're and they they've been doing it a little bit the last couple of weeks, the last couple of shows. You know, obviously she don't have her spots. They have like there's come a new one, new girls came out last week. Uh, that, that is it Diamante and some other uh, women? Yeah, yeah. Ivel yeah, Ivelisse, Ivelisse, Right. I, th- yeah. I thought they were pretty good last week. They're pretty good. I think those two really came in, and it, it really makes it started to they at least for the time being le- legitimize the division. Um, mm-hmm. I think Big Swole's pretty good in the ring. Um, yeah. You know, you know, it's funny the, the Big Baker thing is crazy because like. I don't find her impressive in the ring, yeah. you know, given, given the hype she came in with. But this heel turn really has been her – has saved her career, to be honest with you. Yeah, and before she got hurt, she had one of her best matches yet against Ashida when her nose was blown. Right. So, um, I mean, people forget that uh, Britt Baker's only been wrestling for like three or four years, like full-time. So, she's that green. She's that green. Yeah, she's, she's still pretty green, but she's – She's better than you know a WWE diva back in the, like the mid two thousands or whatever. You know, right. she's she's still she's still passable in the ring, but her personality more than makes up for it. And sometimes, as you know, as an old school wrestling fan, you don't need to be a technical wizard to be really good in a, to be a superstar in wrestling. You know this. How, how do you feel about Sheeta being champion? You like you like it? Yeah, um, I would have liked to see Nala Rose hold on to it a bit longer, but it's pretty obvious what they see in Sheeta. Like she's an amazing technical wrestler. And it, it's it's uh it's good to show um Joshi pro wrestling Japanese uh, women's pro wrestling mm-hmm. uh in America so it, it's nice to get that kind of exposure but I would like to see a longer Nyla Rose heel run. Do you watch New Japan? Uh oh, like not 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 that much. I keep up because my friends like New Japan and Stardom. Mm-hmm. I right. keep up, but there's there's just a ton of wrestling already, and you already know I cover basketball. So it's like it's already yeah. hard enough as this to watch basketball and try to watch wrestling like, you know, two 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 days a week, three days a week. You know, it's already tough as is. And if AEW has another show coming up, it's like I have to watch this one too. Oof. Yeah, so. I, I I have a hard time with as it is. You know, I this past week was the first week in months where I actually watched all my shows uh-huh. around the same time. Like I watch raw. So I so. And I, I, th- I think I explained this to you when we last on the, the podcast. Uh-huh. I don't watch any shows live. Like so, right now we're recording this podcast. Raw is on as we speak. Yeah, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not watching it because I would, yeah because I rather watch the edited Hulu version. You know, that's down from three hours to uh, an hour and a half. I also found out last week that NXT there's, a, there's also an edited NXT as well from an hour and a half to an hour. Mm. So I found ways to cut corners a little bit to because you know obviously time's the essence yeah um so i've been able to kind of sort of keep up with everything at least last week I, I was able to keep up um other than AEW and nxt which i still watch every week 
I hadn't watched Raw and SmackDown in its entirety in months until this past week. Um, I, what, I, what I used to do, I, I, I watched the uh, three-minute recaps on social media. Just keep, <laughs> just see what's going on. You know, just keep staying in the loop a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, I, 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 you know, that, that, that it's hard to, to keep up with. Like I said, you know, you talk about basketball. I'm, I do sports and I follow politics and I yeah. talk culture. And there's so much <laughs> going on with me that – you know, it's hard to really. That's that's why my my, my buddies might tell me, uh, oh, you need to wa- you need to watch uh, Impact. Like, dude, really? Impact? I'm, I sorry, I, I can't fit that in. You know? <laughs> I don't have time, and, and I have kids too. Oh, by the way, I have kids and a wife. You know? Yeah. So, you, know, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, and go ahead. I mean, I don't have a family. I'm already having a hard time keeping up. You know, there I don't have go. kids. And um, the thing is, it's like not only that, but like I'm finding, you know a little bit off topic but i'm finding joy in like my older hobbies that i that i kind of lost over the years like i'm watching anime again it's oh, like really? yeah like i i mentioned over the past week that i've been watching anime because like like i joined this facebook group where it's like old anime convention goers that i you know and i reunited some old friends and they're just like hey you should watch some anime again like the old days i'm like okay mm-hmm. sure and now i'm addicted again it's like ah oh. that's like, kind of what wrestling is to me now like, yeah when i got back to wrestling last year it was more so uh, old habits or whatever I've got back into. Same thing. I, I, I can relate. Yeah, yeah. So it's been it's been a little tough. Like I was joking uh, a couple of days ago that oh my god, like basketball is getting in the way of anime now. What the heck's going on? <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, I I, st- I I enjoy all all um all all the all the stuff that's going on in front of my face right now. But you know, there's there's also just a little time at this point too. So you just get what you can. Mm-hmm. One thing I noticed too with AEW that's it's quietly been happening in the last few months too. Mm-hmm. I feel like, especially you know, now we're in July and seeing their roster, they really filled it out really well in the last six months. Like I, to me, one of the things I was saying back in January how to fix AEW, you know, is they need to try this out, bring these guys in, or try to bring some big guys and this and that. Mm-hmm. They have a really balanced roster. They do. Yeah, and the thing is, it's like they've been bringing bringing in some big names for the independents to um, mm-hmm. showcase their skills and maybe they could be hired later. Um, what they should, um, what they should watch out for is that uh, while they read these big names, it's like, I know it's so tempting to sign them. Like I know Eddie Kingston was, was there last, last week. week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Um, they, and they brought in Ricky Starks a couple of weeks ago and he signed him. I like him recently. Yeah. He's good. Um, they should be careful not to hoard talent like WWE admittedly does. Because, like, you'll have to find time for everybody. And it's already hard in a two-hour show. Some people already don't go on, like, um, they only show up, like, once every two weeks or whatever. And then they're still dark that they have to fill in, too. So, um, like, they should be careful not to hoard talent and suddenly they don't have time for everybody else. That's true. That's a good point. Um, do you agree they have the best tag team division in wrestling? Oh, that's by far. <laughs> it's amazing. By far. Uh, uh, WWE is, like, they, they like... I it's been mentioned that Vince McMahon is not a big fan of tag teams, so you only see like three or four uh, prominent ones on each show on Raw and SmackDown. Mm-hmm. NXT they're a little deeper, but even even now they've been kind of like because the main the other two shows have taken all their tag teams as well. Mm-hmm. So, um, but AEW they really concentrate on tag teams. Sometimes sometimes it's their main event, and some and you know we we're not used to seeing. Uh, tag team uh, tag team matches as main events on um, Raw or SmackDown, so they've really concentrated on it. I mean, they had enough for a, for an eight tag eight eight team tournament. Like that's kind of rare in American mainstream wrestling. Well, in the case in the case of WWE though, it, it, it's, it's not a case of they're not good enough to have tag teams. They don't they just don't want to prioritize it. Yeah, exactly. And again, Vince McMahon's not not a fan of tag teams. He's not a fan of stables. He likes he likes. Um, he usually builds around one superstar, and even then, he hasn't really done a great job of that as of late. So, <laughs> well, that hasn't. And well, to be honest, I, mean, I I can't speak on the last maybe fifteen years. I mean, but I don't think they really had a. I mean, I, I'm I know they tried to Roman Reigns, really. To be honest with you, but to me, the last superstar they really had that they built around to, to success was John Cena. Yeah, you're 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 totally correct. And Roman Reigns, they tried, uh, but the thing is, it's like. I the fans have gotten smarter, which is another, it, which is kind of like a downside too in wrestling that fans are smarter now. Mm-hmm. But um, we, everyone knew that the that the Rockets gonna be strapped to Roman, and because of that, it's like oh, it's gotten too predictable now. 
so they booed the hell out of him. <laughs> mm-hmm. But it's weird too because like you know John Cena he got booed too, but it still worked. And I think they're trying to uh, they kind of be used similar, I guess, in a sense, right? Like John Cena was booed also, you know, not like he was very polarizing with fans. Roman's kind of the same boat too, right? I mean, he's kind of it's kind of the same thing. There's, there's nothing new there. Kind of the same thing, but also um, John Cena's charismatic and good enough to cover for himself because right. he has a lot more uh, he has a lot more skills on on the mic, while Roman is more of a silent silent but strong type. Mm-hmm. So him talking seems kind of unnatural. He's gotten better over the last year, and the, the way they handled him over the last year after he recovered from leukemia, well, that's was what much it is. Better. Yeah, I, 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 I hate saying this, but you almost have to not credit it, but you almost have to like give. I, mean, I hate to say it, credit to him getting sick to get him well, over. Well, yeah, him, but... you know, well, yeah, but at the same time, they didn't shove him down our throats. Like this time around, you're only getting a a smaller helping of Roman, and it it seems more natural uh, the way they brought him in instead of like, oh, he's our main event guy, right? This time around, it didn't seem like it. So. Oh, he has been he has been near the title picture at all. He's been he's been pretty much mid car. You, you can argue mid car status really for the last uh, year and a half. Yeah, bad before he went to um before he skipped out on WWE for the pandemic. Right. But yeah, they they decide that he's probably better off as a mid carter instead instead of like, you know, oh he's their main event guy, he's the number one guy all the time. But uh now like they I, they gave that to Seth and he gave it to Becky in the meantime before Roman before Roman could he was probably gonna get his crowning moment on WrestleMania, but obviously yeah, he wouldn't have it there. Match. Yeah, but the pandemic yeah. came of course. Yeah, it wouldn't um, happen there so. Okay. Let me talk about this real quick because NXT. This is this is definitely your wheelhouse. NXT. Yeah. Um, now I I have to admit I'm I've only been a fan of NXT less than a year, so I understand it being you know for what it was for a long time a developmental you know quote unquote promotion to call it although it's still WWE promotion but you know what I mean. Um, but I was on the impression when you go when you go to TV when you on two hours television on Wednesday nights. To me, what you're saying is saying to, to, to people like me is that oh, it's not no longer a promotion, it's not a development promotion anymore. Now it's uh, if not on the level of Raw SmackDown, certainly at least considering to be close to level of Raw SmackDown. Um, yeah. That being said, I've enjoyed the show still the last couple of weeks, but I feel like they hit a wall recently. They have. I can I can totally talk about this. Um, Go ahead. Uh, it feels weird that I'm going to make this comparison right now what? because he's obviously not on the level of this guy. But remember when – well, maybe you don't. But Stone Cold Steve Austin turned heel on WrestleMania 17. Right. Yeah. And from there, WWF, WWE kind of went down on this downward spiral that they're still going on right now because they don't do long-term storytelling anymore, right? Um, when Johnny Gargano turned heel in Portland – I feel yes. like the quality of the show went down because suddenly they're hot shotting angles. They're doing more rematches. It feels more raw SmackDown ish and it doesn't feel so different anymore. It's a great point. Um, and I actually agree with you. It, it, what's funny though, is like he goes, he, and it's funny. Cause like when I started watching NXT, Gargano had gotten hurt around yeah. that, I think around that time. And then he came back and you know, he was still a baby face. And then he had that match against Finn Balor. And after that, he turned on, on Tommaso, uh, yeah. Champa, you know, yeah. um, yeah, you can really argue that the downturn started probably, and I, I wouldn't say it's a downturn because I still enjoy the product, but you can argue that the stall out came out right after that takeover in, in February. After yeah, the yeah, and the thing is, it's like um, I feel like they were affected the most because the fans really drive NXT, mm-hmm. um, and they and they stopped doing long term storytelling, and I'm like, why are we having rematches all of a sudden? Why do wins and losses like don't matter as much anymore when they used to in NXT? And now it's like, um, why is Dakota Kai getting a, getting uh, the title feud all of a sudden? She hasn't won very many times, <laughs> you know. So I feel, like, I feel like I do that because of the fact that they've already, you know, Shane Baszler has gone called up to the, to Raw. Um, you know, a couple of they lost a couple of people. You know, you know, uh, Bianca Belair got called to Raw as well too. Um, you know, it's funny. You 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 said you said that <clears throat> you you noticed this in in February. To me, I noticed this really in the last couple of weeks. Um, the stall out, and mm-hmm. I'm I'm worried now because now with Keith Lee being champion, and by the way, I love that he's champion. I, I'm, I'm, yeah, he's, I'm he's amazing. He's Although amazing. I have to ask you quick though, do you think they would have made that if the pandemic was not a thing right now? 
is it possible they pulled the trigger on this this soon, or they would have waited a little longer? Because I think they waited. I, I think they waited a little longer had the pandemic not been here. They would have waited for uh, the SummerSlam takeover, which is their usually big, which is their usual big show. Mm-hmm. So probably a month longer. But we all know that Keith Lee was so hot uh, it, uh, coming into 2020. Like he was the guy that got the 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 that had the. Uh, Got was the beneficiary of the two hours expansion on NXT right. because he was he was in limbo before they went on national TV. Like they didn't know what to do with him. So oh, really? He got on. Yeah, he was lost. And there was a tease where it's like maybe he'll turn heel because he looks so lost in the shuffle. He gets on TV. There's more time now on NXT, and suddenly he's like the he's the biggest star. So. I think he benefited the most on uh, uh, NXT going to USA, and now he's their champion. That's a good point. That's a good point. Here's my fear because mm-hmm. again, the I'm looking at NXT up to this point as on the level. Clearly, it's not because mm-hmm. Matt Riddle got called up a month and a half. Ago. Yeah, he's yeah. doing big things on SmackDown. Um, I'm concerned now with Adam Cole losing the title. I you already heard rumblings about the the idea of possibly now this is not official yet. I'm not gonna look. I, I'm yeah. a, I'm just saying the the, the, the dirt sheets what we're saying. It, this it's possible that Undisputed Era might get called up too. Yeah, yeah. All four guys. That is not just half, but the whole four four guys. And yeah. to me, the reason why I got into NXT heavily was actually because of Adam Cole and and, and that faction. And mm-hmm. I'm gonna have a hard time. I'll still watch, obviously, but I'm going to have a hard time adjusting to, you know, if they get called up and they bring in new talent. And, and again, they're going to they're gonna replenish that with other new talent. But, you know, they've been such on a roll right now that all of a sudden they're going to – I think the pandemic really changed things. Yeah, and I I don't know if they were going to last there longer anyway, mm-hmm. but I, I think they're, they're eventually going to get called up too. We're on SmackDown. But, yeah, right now it's like they have – the, the thing is that they really haven't built anybody new in the last few months or so. They have Tim- Tim- Timothy Thatcher in. But, like, again, you mentioned Riddle. You mentioned Undisputed Era. Dominic Dijakovic has been rumored to be called up. Bianca Belair has already been called up. Mm-hmm. The Street Profits has been called up already. Like, they are just uh, hoarding NXT talent. And right now, it's like they've got to build some new stars. And usually, NXT has been pretty good at that. But the way the pandemics, the the way that's the, the pandemic's been with Raw and SmackDown, um, some of the talent are not, have been not go, have not been going there, and of yeah. course because of COVID, because of, course of COVID, mm-hmm. uh, NXT's kind of thin right now. Yeah, and WWE because of they're they they they're using NXT. It's funny NXT now is they're using NXT talent to get, get guys over. Like Matt, yeah. right, right now, right like right now, SmackDown has no no stars. Smack, yeah. I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not buying Braun. I, we'll talk about about in a second Braun Strowman, whatever, but. You yeah. know, there's no – Roman Reigns being gone and probably gone for a while given the fact that the spike is still pretty big here in Florida. There's no start on SmackDown. You know, Raw, I mean – I mean, yeah, Seth still, obviously. But he'll, he'll probably go away for a little bit after Becky and him have the baby. Um, there's no – there's actually lacking of stars, really, outside maybe AJ Styles on SmackDown and maybe a few few more on Raw. Um and, I, and it's funny, like how now Raw and SmackDown are now hoarding NXT talent to get guys over. It's crazy. Yeah, and I feel like the biggest stars right now in Raw and SmackDown because they've been they've been um, going on both shows as of late have been Asuka, Bailey, and Sasha Banks. I feel like they've been the biggest stars oh. thus far. Oh, well, I'm getting there. I'm gonna get there in a second because Bailey has been my whoo, been amazing. Um, yeah. So if you're Vince or whoever was in charge of you know the, making these decisions. Well, Vince obviously, but you know what I mean. Um, what do you do, with Adam Cole? <sighs> and Vince doesn't like smaller guys. That's just how it is. We mm-hmm. know this. Uh, um, what do you do with Adam Cole? Um, I mean, if I had it my way, everybody would stay at NXT. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Me too. But, um, um, but like, okay, who has a stable right now? Raw has Raw has the Hurt business, and they also have. Uh, the Messiah, whatever they're called right now, like Seth Rollins yeah. and Buddy Murphy. Mm-hmm. So I put them in SmackDown because they're lacking stables over there. 
Um, if they're gonna if they're gonna go with the stable, because again, like I don't, I don't know if they're probably gonna separate all four of them. Who knows? Mm-hmm. And that'd be terrible, honestly, because it's like they'll just they'll just be floating. Um, but I would I would debut um, Adam Cole and the Undisputed Era at SmackDown, and uh, uh, I'm not sure. Well, obviously we, we mentioned Braun Strowman as a champion over there. Like I don't know where they'd go after because Adam Cole uh, could easily be a main event player if they want him to be. Uh, you think so? They can't go out. Yeah. On, on that platform? Because so. my fear is he go, he gets called up to, to the big leagues. Ross back down. He gets lost in the shuffle. Well, they did have a main event against Daniel Bryan. Uh, it, it's amazing. But again, being mm-hmm. the guy. Being the guy. Yeah. yeah. I'm not saying he can't do it. I think he could do it. I just think that, you know, he, he'll be misused. Yeah. I think Adam Cole has to play his best politicking game when he's there. And I do, I and I do hear that Daniel Bryan is part of creative now on SmackDown. So yeah, um, him and um, who's the other guy? An edge. edge. Yeah. So he'll have to do that. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. But um, chances are it's probably not going to happen that he's going to be a main event player. But I think he has the potential to be. Hmm. You know, like we've seen it. We've seen it. So right, of course. Did you yeah. see the uh, Adam Cole Mac- Pat-, Pat McAfee thing last week? I did. Was I that did. a work? Was that a work? Yeah, certainly a work. Yeah, because. My 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 the biggest inkling immediately was how how quick they switched the camera to Adam Cole even before he threw down the mic, like right. how did he get there immediately? You know, so yeah, and I I feel like um he was allowed to curse just for you know just to get people talking it's it's fine but yeah it's like yeah. him mentioning I'm the NXT champ like it's it's the NXT championship it's like it's not a real thing. It's, right. it's a thing in wrestling, but <laughs> yeah, but in real life, it's like it's whatever, you know. So him mentioning he's the NXT champion did it all by himself during a shoot or whatever. Yeah, I don't buy it. Yeah, but course. it's fun. Sure, it's fun. Now Adam Cole's great, man. Like he he gives great promos, and he you know his his whole quote unquote gimmick we would call it phenomenal. Yeah, probably the best. Yeah. Honestly, probably the best NXT doing that. Honestly, um, yeah. Yeah, so you think they'll they'll feud on NXT? Do you think they'll feud like on another uh, platform? Uh, my hunch says nothing will come out of it because we've seen things come out of we've seen nothing come out of things like uh, Booker T and Corey Graves had a feud as announcers and nothing came out of it. So I feel like there's not gonna be anything. I'll, I'll be surprised if something comes out of it, but I'm leaning towards nothing. Okay. Uh, are you talking about Are you talking huh? about it now? Are you talking about it now? What? The Adam Cole Pat McAfee thing? Are you talking about it now? What do you mean, me or just in general? In general. Are you talking about it now? No, nah, I mean, it's what it is. I mean, I, I think it's a work, obviously. Um, I just don't know, what, what, do you, what do you do with that? Is, is that? is that a bridge or something else? Is McAfee going to wrestle? Is, is that something that, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I, where do you go with that? I mean, they sh- should wrestle, but again, it's like, what, what are you going to do with it, you know? Um, and and like I said, if you're not talking about it now, then what's the point? It's like it's been a week already. You're not talking about it anymore. It's like it happened, it's well, old news it happened on Thursday, I think the video came out Thursday, I believe. Yeah, so, but it's old. It's it's old news now, though. Like don't talk about I it agree. anymore. So well, well, unless they bring it up on on programming, um, on some um, on NXT programming this this Wednesday. I suppose so. We'll see. Um, but it's, it's but it's awfully like silent right now. Usually, the Thursdays will be talking about it. And that's what I'm saying. Where does, it, where does this go? Is this going to go somewhere? Yeah. Is, is yeah. If, if you don't wrestle McAfee, is this a bridge to something else? Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? And yeah, I think the most the, the thing that makes that, that makes sense is that Pat McAfee is managing someone else to beat Adam Cole. But you know, do you want a former NFL punter to beat up Adam Cole? I mean, that looks bad. <laughs> yeah. You can only pull it off on NXT. Not on Raw SmackDown because then because then it it, it deals just if you put um put that match on Raw SmackDown, you know and he and Adam Cole loses that match to Matt McAfee, you, you you're already delegitimizing de- Adam Cole's uh you know push. Yeah. You know I that mean, that, I, that I, can't I, happen. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, Adam Cole's not bulletproof enough to make take that kind of loss. Um, right. Yeah. So. Adam Cole's a star, dude. He's a star. Period. In discussion. <laughs> He should be, yeah. It should be treated as such, but that's yeah. me. Yeah. Um, okay, we mentioned it a little while ago, uh, Bailey. You know, mm-hmm. it, it's taken a while, actually, you know, but, 
you know, you, it's about the pandemic and MVPs and who's been great in spite of this pandemic. Mm-hmm. Bailey has been probably the best person, a wrestler, male or female, on that entire WWE roster. Okay, maybe maybe Keith Lee the other one, but Bailey has been a godsend for SmackDown. Um, yeah, that's the month. She's been phenomenal. She's really mm-hmm. fun to group. Yeah, I mean, I wish they wouldn't lose so often though, because we've seen it. Like she also Kyrie saying recently, and it's like, I, I I really I really don't like it when um champions lose at all because mm-hmm. they're the best. They should be champions. They should be the best. They should be, you know, undefeatable basically. Right. Regardless though, regardless though, like she's been. She she has been such a uh, let's use that term Karen on she TV is absolutely Karen no, without question yeah um and I had my doubts because when I look back at it it's like I can't believe all these women have turned heel Bailey Asuka Io Shirai Sami Zayn like I can't believe they all turned heel which when I when I, when all I can see them as are you know tough baby faces for their entire careers. But Bailey's done a great, great, great uh, time adjusting, and of course you have Sasha Banks on your side, who I think is a better natural heel. But um, they've been they've been MVPs for uh, both shows, all three women, Asuka, Bailey, and Sasha. Right. So I came in watching last summer, and Bailey was was a white meat baby face. Oh know, yeah, obviously white meat. But it felt like she, it never caught on much. Like it, it felt like that what she was doing had a ceiling. Um, and I, I know obviously Vince and everybody loves her because she's great in the ring, of course. You know, so they they t- took this risk of put, turning her heel, and for a little bit, it, for a little while, it didn't catch on. All of a sudden, now she's one of the biggest heels in, in all wrestling right now. And, but she, but the way she does it though is so great. It's not, it's not like you know I'm not just a bad guy. I'm a bad guy, and I'm gonna annoy you. And I'm, I'm gonna be you know this kind of you said Karen, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> you know. She's pulled off yeah. phenomenal. And I think a lot of it also you have to credit Sasha Banks also too. You know, yeah. She adds to the the whole thing. Um, do you? Here's my question though, because they've sort of teased this for the last couple months though. Um, but I don't know if it's gonna happen or not. I'll ask you. Do you do you break up Sasha and Bailey at any point? Oh, that's that's the end game. That's the end game. Um, I because they tried this in I believe 2018, 2019, whichever. Point eighteen, I believe. But um, they did this like passive aggressive feud for like months, and nothing came out of it, and they became tag team champions instead. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's the end game because I think they want to replicate what they did in NXT in 2015, where I still believe it's the greatest women's match ever I've ever seen when Sasha versus see Bailey. That. I gotta see yeah. that. That's, that's NXT Brooklyn. Yes, NXT Brooklyn one. It's the greatest women's match I've ever seen. Okay, and right. and I'll say this. The second women's greatest match is their sequel. <laughs> uh, take, the really? Over. Yeah, it's, a th- it's the 30 minute Iron Woman match, and they were the main event. So you should check both of those matches out. Has Sasha ever been a, ever been a babyface before? Uh, yeah, she started as a babyface. No, no, she didn't. Uh, she, she actually had a long babyface run for like a few years before she came back. Um, At NXT. Last summer. La- last su- Oh, NXT? Well, I'm saying NXT. What I- Sorry. No, I'm saying when, when, when did she have the, the, the baby face run? That was my question. Uh, in WWE, she had it for like three years. Wow, a long time. Yeah, and this is like this is really her first extended heel run on the ring roster. Okay. But but on NXT, she was always a heel because again, legit boss. So yeah. It's funny because like I, I was thinking that if, if if of the two people here, you turn he, you turn face. I, I was I was saying Sasha, but. God, ba- I mean, Bailey's been. Gr- I mean, she's been great as a as a heel. She really has. But it pains it pains me because I always thought she was a natural baby face, but she's doing a great job. So. Who Bailey? Yeah, well, she yeah. is. She just does it well, but I think she had a ceiling. I think her going heel actually probably I don't say saved her career, but I think it really added an extra layer to her character. You know, it and- it did. I I just thought, and and you're right that they put a ceiling on it, but um. She was supposed to be the, the the female version of John Cena, and I think they blew it. <laughs> so, like, she was such a good at two shoes in her babyface run throughout NXT yeah. and WWE, and they, I, I think they kind of blew that. 
I, I love the heel run. I, I really do like it. Um, yeah. And honestly, I think they should keep these two together. This, this, this should be the DX. This should be DX. The Golden I've, seen, I've seen that on Twitter where someone was suggesting it to be she Generation X. So Yeah. I, yeah. I, I think it's, it's great. I mean, it's natural. Why break it up? Wait well, until you have to do it. Well, they're probably they're probably going to break them up around WrestleMania, so I'm going to call that right now because that's how the movie operates. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I think they have a match at WrestleMania. Right. <laughs> Staying on SmackDown real quick, though. And I hate to say this, dude. I know, I know obviously, he got it because of reasons, you know, being, of course. But I, I, I was never a fan of it, and I'm so over Braun Strowman getting, having a championship. Mm-hmm. I like Braun Strowman as a, as a person. I, I, I like him. Mm-hmm. This don't seem like as a universal champion, dude. Um, I think they pulled the trigger on Braun too late. Wait till uh, two years late, I think. Wait, yeah, two, three years late, yeah, because he had a, he was hot against Roman, uh, when they were feuding, and I thought that should be around the time he should have made him champion when he was doing those those feats of strength or whatever. Um, so they pulled it too late on him, and now it just seems so cold. <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah. sure, bronze champion, okay, that's. Pretty, I mean, that's I mean, cool. obviously, if Roman, if, if, if the pandemic didn't happen, Roman Reigns would been champion right now. That's, that's yeah. obvious. Yeah. So yeah. we know why they're doing it, but yeah, you know. It, 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 I don't know, dude. I, I, I'm not feeling it. It's cold. And what I'm excited about though right now, I know you're, I'm, I'm not sure if you're going to bring this up or not, but uh, Big E is going to have a singles run. Hmm? Big E is going to have a singles run. I'm not sure if you saw SmackDown last week. But, but, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I did see that. Yeah, but yeah, Big E, I'm hoping he gets his run as the champion because he is, he's obviously, he's obviously charismatic. We've seen that over the last few years. Hmm? And he can go in the ring. And he's a believable big guy, so I hope he gets his run. Here's a, it's funny you said that. Here's my question: mm-hmm. Would you at any point turn Big E heel? If you turn Big E heel, you turn the entire group heel. I'm fine with that. They're great heels. <laughs> like we see that I see that run uh, when they're uh, when they were heels as New Day. So I turned the entire group heel. I would never separate those three though. Never, never. I don't know. Biggie, I, I feel like Biggie could pull it off, though. Like, I've never seen him before. Obviously, you say he, he's seen it before with them, but uh, I could see him being, a, by, even by himself, a, a, a great solo heel. Yeah, but I really don't want to see New Day break up at all. You like, you, you like New Day? I like New Day. And yeah. I just think it makes no sense at this point to turn them heel. I mean, to turn to break them up. Because right. it's obvious that their, their friendship has gone beyond wrestling. And it's like, it just doesn't make sense anymore. More at all. I mean, they got a podcast to go to Crown Yeah. So, you know? and they have Up of Down Down, which I which I watch. So, they're what, what was that, now? On that channel? And they and they're also getting Up of Down Down, which is Xavier Woods' a gaming channel. They're oh, right, 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 right. So, right, true. it's like it just breaking them up just doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah. I want to. Would you Would you consider them a top top three faction all time? Top five faction. Yeah, top ten. I mean, there's a lot like Horsemen, DX, NWO. Um, Call me geez. insane here, dude. I mm-hmm. I would put them over DX as a faction. I don't know. I, yeah, I don't dude, know. outside the first, <clears throat> outside the the original Sean and Triple H run in '97, '98. Mm-hmm. I, I did. I, I never really really liked the the DX with Triple H and X Pac and. And you know, I wasn't a fan of that necessarily. Uh, I I guess I can understand that, but it's just that they were, uh, because I guess they were kind of quote unquote groundbreaking on television in a way. So, you know, I'll, I'll, um, I'll also think losing Shawn Michaels for a whole freaking five years. I think Shawn Michaels would yeah, a big hole. That too. That's a that's big too. hole there left there. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. But do they should be definitely? I mean, I'm, I'm gonna do a podcast with my boys, my boys, a couple of weeks, and we'll probably bring up top factions again. Um, obviously NWO, yeah. Heenan family, you know all that, but yeah, New Day's not being that conversation though. I mean they, they, I mean I know it's a different era, obviously, but God, they, 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 they still connect. Longe- longevity too, and, exactly. Um, then they haven't broken up. Like even the horse broke up at some point. So right, that's yeah. true. That's true. Um, how are you liking the Drew McIntyre era? I wish there were fans in the arenas. 
So it, it kind of sucks that he's getting his run without any fans. Um, but he's always been main event talent. Uh, Vince liked him early on when they first uh, got him in, I believe, 09 or 2010, right. whenever, they, whenever they got him. Um, but he's always had the talent. Um, he, he has he, he has uh, the body that Vince likes. <laughs> And he can talk. So, yeah, I, I, he is definitely worthy of me having talent. It's just that it sucks that um, he doesn't have the fans to cater to right now because of the pandemic. And, and I think he was still, he would still do well with the fans because, honestly, yeah, yeah. It, it was it was already happening. We, we, we saw the wheels already turning on that. Um, yeah. yeah, he I, – I love Drew. I, 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 I remember writing, writing a blog last, last uh, summer – Saying when it when he announced King of the Ring, and I was saying, well, he's got to win King of the Ring. This got to be his launching pad to to the title because he mm-hmm. had to look. I remember The Rock even saying something too last summer about like how Drew McIntyre should be the next guy to, to build yeah. around and mm-hmm. go figure. They go they get the Drew. Um, yeah. No, I, I'm loving it. I think they they he's had some good feuds. Um, obviously the pandemic's hurt him in terms of uh like where do you go now? Like I I think the only way, only way you go now with with him is you go with uh uh Randy Orton. Or you revisit the Seth Rollins thing again, but yeah, you know, yeah, he's I, I I think he's had a really really good run so far since winning the title of Mania. I'm not ready for I I think about WWE. I keep I keep Lesnar off TV until you get close to having crowds. I don't even think he wants to do it, regardless, even if you tell him to. <laughs> it's Brock Lesnar. He'll do what he wants. So. Well, of course, but I, I, yeah. but I also think, don't think he'll be as impactful without crowds. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, he needs Which is. Yeah, which is the weird thing in wrestling, right? Like, like we're, like they're trying even though there's no crowds. So, yeah, but but, but I do think, uh, but I do think also it's time for Drew to, uh, they they need to push that Randy Orton feud next. Remember they they were actually starting a feud in, in January, and then Edge came back and that whole thing happened. And um, I don't know if I'm if I'm, if I'm Vince, I'm I'm the creative. I'm I'm my next option is is uh, Drew McIntyre going to Randy Orton. Yeah, they're really not helping Drew to put him in a feud with Dolph Ziggler, who has not won a match in forever. I don't you know what they're doing, though. Title shot. What's that? Is, though? They, they what they did last year. Like, the same extreme rules last year. Dolph Ziggler's feud against Kofi Kingston. It's yeah. just pulling time to get to SummerSlam. Yeah, and it sucks, which is why it's sometimes it's hard to give credibility to WWE. is because it's like, so he loses the TV all the time. Why is he getting a title shot? You know, that sort of thing. So, you know, it's not the wrestling that I grew up with when it's like, oh, He's winning a lot of matches. He should be next in line for the title. And now it's like it's just anybody who's getting a title shot now, and I don't like that. So Right. No. I, I, yes, it's filling time, obviously. And there was history. I, look, I, to be honest with you, I didn't hate the feud, though. I thought the feud was pretty good. Uh, there's history there, too, with those two guys. So I think you, you can fill in TV time with that. Um, but, yeah, all in all, it, it, make it make sense. I agree with you. Make it make sense. You know, yeah. he's won a match on TV in, in, in months, and yet title shot already? Like, really? Yeah, it's, it's kind of like it's kind of like giving like uh, who's a t- terrible team right now in the NBA. Uh, kind of like giving um, like the, the Minnesota Timberwolves a title shot. Yeah, the Warriors a title shot right now. It's like what do they deserve to get a title shot for? You know, it's like mm-hmm. it doesn't make sense. So yeah, I'm yeah. with you. Yeah. Okay, let's get to the NBA real quick before you have to go. Um, the return to Thursday. We have we've had scrimmages so far. Um, where are you on the whole? thing with the bubble you know the pandemic and the return of basketball are, are, you, are you i think you and i have discussed on social media but tell the folks on this podcast how do you feel about and, and remember you also write about this stuff also you, you write about basketball you yeah talk about basketball podcast so you have basketball junkie where is your head on with this whole thing now basketball returning cautious very cautious because um okay like they can put all the protections in and that's fine, but it's also on the people, the players, the, the staff, whatever, to behave. And no one's gonna stop them. Lou Williams already got busted, right? So it takes one, just like that, to bring the entire thing down. Which is why I'm just like, I'm not sure if it's gonna happen, right? Um, WNBA has a better shot at finishing because they have fewer people, fewer teams, and a and a, and a shorter season. They have a better shot at finishing this. The NBA has 22 teams with 15-man rosters with a big coaching staff. And they're going to be more reckless about this because, well, you know, I need to go to the strip club, blah, 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 stuff like that. Like, oh, we saw that Lou Williams. <laughs> yeah, Lou Williams, obviously. So yeah. 
And we already had Chris Asperzegas forget to take a test. Like, it's, if, if they're going to be reckless about this, I'm not sure if they're going to be able to finish it, you know? Obviously, and I've seen that tweet where it's like, oh, you're rooting for the virus to win so that sports don't happen. No, I just want the players to be safe. That's why I didn't want sports to happen, you mm-hmm. know? They're human beings too, right? But mm-hmm. since I'm just one person, I'm no politician or whatever that has any power to tell them to stop, they're going to go on with it. And all we can do is hope for the best. If, so if you had the choice in a matter to A, remember basketball under these conditions, or B, mm-hmm. not have basketball, what would mm-hmm. you have done? Sports should not be happening this year. Hell, sports should not be happening until the, pan- the, the pandemic's over or the vaccine's here. Um, part of it is because, obviously, you, you've seen how the government has handled this. If the government handled it better, I might – feel better about bringing sports back but as mm-hmm. of now it's kind of like no it should not be happening you know um and i've been vocal about it the entire time and yeah, it's not have. because i don't want and because i don't want sports to happen i just want them to be safe yeah it, all- it, it, it isn't and people probably saying oh what the hell dude well it doesn't benefit you to not have sports because you do this for a living you write for yes. basketball you write about do podcasts on, on, on basketball so obviously you do want sports back but at the same time it's got to be conducive to the situation yeah there will be no economy if all people are dead. Like, you know? It's like, that's why I want, that's why I'd rather put lives ahead of everyone's entertainment, you know? So, um, but again, I don't have the power and obviously they're going to go on with it. So all you can do is that hopefully that they get through this every day, you hope that they're safe. So, um, you know, that, that's, that's all we got right now is hope. I don't care who wins. It's whatever. If the Lakers don't win, whatever. The Sparks don't win, whatever. I just want them all to be safe. I don't care who wins. You're not one of those uh, asterisk people, right? Asterisk here. And... No. Okay. No. No. Why? Well, I, I why? agree. I, like... I, agree with you. <laughs> I agree with you. It's just annoying. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. Anyway, Ray, it was fun. Yeah, it was. Uh, anything else you want me to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What else do you have on mind? We have spoken on a podcast in quite a like, couple months. Um, well, how, how are you doing the pandemic? How are you doing? I'm good. Um, I think I just mentioned like last week that was my first time going out in a month because I'm being very, very, very cautious about this pandemic. You know, I ha- I obviously also have um, underlying conditions as well. So I don't want to like, you know, be out there too much. Right. Um, so I'm just I'm just playing it safe right now. Um, and the thing is, is, like, I know people are just like, well, I need to go out. Well, I'm going to be fine being inside because like, honestly, we have a lot of entertainment inside the house. You know, I got my video games, I got my anime, I got my sports that are going on now. Um, I'm going to be fine. It's and even then, yeah, we have plenty of entertainment. You do too. Of course. So, yeah, we all do. So I don't know how – I and if, if you really need, like, people in contact, like, you, you can do video chats, you know. Mm-hmm. It's the same as hanging out, basically. It's just that we just can't touch them, which is fine. So, <laughs> you know. Well, I, well, I'm back to work. Um, it's been, mm-hmm. it's been really, um, let's just say it's, it's been interesting to see the development. Like I have to wear a mask every day and all that. And, you know, I mean, I'm thankful I, have, I, I can work and I've been so far, I've been, I've been safe, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know, dude, it's, it's, it's we're right where we're at. Well, you are too. You and I both, you, you're in California, mm-hmm. I'm in Florida. Yeah. We are the two epicenters of the world right now. Yeah. And, and it's, it disappoints me because, like, we got off to such a great start. And then mm-hmm. Newsom decided to open it all up. And I was kind of like, no, what are you doing? <laughs> like, we're not all safe right now. And, of course, if, particularly what happened is that now we're also the epicenter of COVID. So, um, yeah, it's got to get worse before it gets better. So um, that, that, That's the sad part. That is the, uh, the uh, sad part about all this. Yeah. Oh, by the way, are you excited about, about Mike Tyson coming back to, to boxing? I don't know. Like, I haven't been excited for a Mike Tyson fight in, like, nearly more than 20 years now, honestly. Like, I don't know. I don't, I don't really have a desire to watch a Mike Tyson match at this point in time. And I guess it's against Roy Jones, but, like, I don't know. I don't, I don't feel excited about it right now. Funny, he was on he was on AEW a months ago, about a month yeah. ago, and he did another dynamite appearance, and then that's it. Uh, where is that going? 
Well, nowhere now. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. It's um, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And I love Mike Tyson when he was like beating up everyone in the eighties or whatever. But like at this point, it's like I'm not, I'm not too excited to see a Mike Tyson match in 2020. This isn't this isn't wrestling, and he's not he's not a young buck anymore. He's like fifty something already. He looks great though. He looks really good. Sure. But one punch can just end it all, so I'm not excited well, about that. Well, at least they can punch my freaking uh, 25 year old. Is somebody his age? Yeah. Well, at least I don't know. Not excited I'll, about it. I'll I'll, <laughs> I'll definitely look at it to see you know where it goes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but we'll see. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, pandemic life, man. It's crazy. Pandemic life. <laughs> anyway, Ray, thanks on the podcast. Uh. Anything promote? You want to talk, talk about uh, the podcast? What you got going, going on? Yeah, sure. Uh, find me at thelocast.com. I've been. I'm gonna try to write both NBA and WNBA this season, which is gonna be a nice challenge, and hopefully they can keep it going, considering how you know the pandemic is making everyone cautious right now in their bubbles okay. or the bubble, as the WNBA call it. But, yep. Um, also, uh, check out my podcast, Ray Ray's Fundamental. Uh, this week, my guest is Lindsay D'Arcangelo. Uh, she writes for the Athletic Buffalo. The like. WNBA and she knows her stuff, man. So mm-hmm. check that, check that out, and follow me on Twitter at the Model Pass. All right, man. Ray, we'll talk soon, buddy. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. All right, online with us, friend of pod, Cali himself, <laughs> Mark Francois, California, California finest. dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, bud? Not much, man. Just uh, enjoying an unusually mild summer in Southern California. Playing as much golf as my uh, COVID budget will will permit, and trying to stay the hell away yeah. from people like, outside definitely. of a select few. Cobra budget definitely here. Um, I told my wife, you know, don't get too comfortable spending money now because uh, you know you don't know if we're gonna shut down again. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want to. Like, well, my, I never really like as far as my company is concerned. We haven't ever really started again because we're. I mean, we're we're doing okay profit wise, but we're forecasting to be down forty percent in revenue. Oh, and then, you know, for the purposes, yeah, for the purposes of my day job, um, most like the only capital funds I'm talking to that are doing acquisitions right now are doing you know predatory buying. These are these are funds that maybe have a billion or more in liquid capital available to them at the current moment. And they're looking for assets that have bridge loans that are underwater that have recently refinanced and, and gotten themselves into a bad position, maybe spent a bunch of money on a, on a renovation going right into this. And then, so they're swooping in and gobbling up places. Point of that being all their models that they're doing right now are under the assumption that uh, the, the hotel isn't even going to make money for two years. So every model you're doing basically doesn't even start uh, start uh, it's your your break even or underwater uh, until year end 2022. <sighs> the first time to make profit. That's that's when we're forecasting to, like generously to be back on our feet. So great, you start this on a on a high note, right? Good job. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> man, what the wrong with you? <laughs> well, I mean, look, man, we we we. we I come on here most to talk about three things, baseball, basketball, and politics slash current events. And, you know, unfortunately, the last six months or so, the, uh, num- the, the, the third spot on that list is pretty fucking bleak. <sighs> politics. As we will hit 150,000 COVID deaths this week, uh, rate of inspection is still continuing to spike in places like Arizona and in your backyard in Florida. Yeah, that don't remind me California of that. California but... is currently the <laughs> highest total cases in the country, but Gavin Newsom is doing everything he can do to listen to public health experts and doctors. It's just 26% of the population that's telling him to go fuck himself and not wanting to listen. Well, really so good for, really good we are where we are. Really good friend of mine. There's like 13 mm-hmm. countries in the world that will let Americans visit right now. I can't even go to Haiti. Yeah, I know. Haiti so won't let Americans visit. We no, how about that? the shithole <laughs> country crazy. Trump talked about. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We're the bad guys now. <laughs> yeah, um, it's, it's really unfortunate. Well, one, one of my friends got COVID actually recently, so. I've, I've unfortunately... Now a few a few close to me. One of my girlfriends, good friends from college, uh, tested positive, and yeah, and it's going to keep happening. You're going to keep having people in your life impacted by it. 
Yeah. You're, kind of you were in fewer degrees of Kevin Bacon. Yeah, exactly. Um, is today Hunter Day's election day, or is it was it less than that? I think it was yesterday. I want to say today. Today being uh, Monday, July twenty seventh, the time that we're recording this. Um, I want to say a hundred days was yesterday. You know, I I try to avoid talking to conservatives or people who support Trump about the election, about the polls, because I know the answers to me. Oh, what the polls are wrong in twenty sixteen too, and like. Yeah, they were not wrong in 2016. Okay, cause Hillary well, was... I, I did somehow get an email for President Trump's internal poll, and I answered it, so I'm sure you can imagine what that looks like. <laughs> well, you, you did? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know how, but somehow my email address got on one of President Trump's mailing lists. I have been since, like, 2015. I must have liked or, or clicked on the wrong thing back then. But uh, I still get, like, campaign fundraiser emails and shit like that. But, uh, yeah, I responded to one of his how are we doing polls, and it was straight zeros. Meaning? Just, I, you know, obviously I don't approve in any way, shape, or form what, uh, what you know, the president's job performance. And when you, oh, right. um, you know, we talked before offline about, like, for instance, the Mary Trump book and – George Stephanopoulos interview, which mm-hmm. I think you've now had a chance to watch. I right? did watch most of it. Okay, well, you got the point there. I watched it while, I, I watched it while eating crackers and cheese. Nice. <laughs> you should have done it eating KFC or cheese or McDonald's. Would have been more appropriate. Oh, God. I'm so old over fast food. You have no idea. Over fast food, dude. But, no, I mean, the point is um, – we, we know the president's a sociopath with no regard for anyone but himself and the the, the things which advance his his uh, personal view of himself and his his financial portfolio. So uh, that's becoming painfully clear. And as, as more and more polling is done, more and more Americans are seeing things going the wrong direction. So whereas, you know, as recently as, Three, four weeks ago, I was pretty sure uh, Trump was going to get reelected in a shocker to anyone who's not paying attention. But um, now I'm starting to think it's it, 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 Joe Biden can win this thing. So We did a podcast last month, uh, ju- uh, 26th of June, and you said even with, mm-hmm. well, with the polling, you were saying, I think, I think Trump still wins it. I just... Uh, Maybe I'm overly jaded from 2016 and how everybody underestimated him every step but of can, the way. Can, okay, can we also um, real quick, Mark? Okay, because this is something I'm, I'm, I'm learning the last couple of weeks, especially too. The polls, fair, the, po- the polls in 2016 were not actually wrong. Hillary was a three percent favorite to win. Three percent was to win by three percent. She won by two percent actually on the popular vote. That's correct. The polls didn't didn't count for the swings in certain states like Wisconsin yeah, and Michigan. And they, and That's they, the I mix think up. They, I think they've uh, improved a lot of the sampling that gave them. I, you know, in the same way that uh, they learned so much from President Obama's social media presence in 2012, where the Republicans just got absolutely housed. Uh, the GOP completely re-engineered their strategy, invested in social media marketing, all these things, and it propelled them to success in 2016. I think the degree to uh, the, the the amount of trauma that Democrats and the, the DNC experienced over the loss of 2016 and the, once the shock wore off, I think they really took I, – I, it, it seems, based on what a whole lot smarter people than me say on podcasts, is that they learned a lot from that, and they uh, they have taken a lot of steps to correct some of the shortfalls of 2016. But but, but really, Mark. Okay, okay, uh, <laughs> I hear you. But to say nothing of the fact that we're at least not running the least likable candidate besides President Trump. Right there, we go. And the fact that <laughs> that said likable candidate decides There's nobody who's well, ever wanted Hillary Clinton. I have Wisconsin in the bag. I don't need to go there. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to Wisconsin. Yeah. Go there. Oh, yeah, really? Then you lost it by less than 1%. Good job. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. 
lots of arrogance to that last campaign. Um, but that but, being said, but no, I think I think the voter suppression efforts in this country are real. I think the money moneyed interests in this country are real. I think the Republican uh, um, presence on social media is obviously better represented as far as like you know how they work with Facebook and, and things like that. So there are there are a number of things working against the Democrats, and I think it's one of the things that it's like it's theirs to lose now. If you take your eye off the ball for even a second, if you let up for a second, the election could slip away. Some story could come out that propels Trump forward. The other thing that, you know, I've always suspected about 2016 and could prove to be true about 2020 is a lot of the people who vote for President Trump aren't necessarily willing to admit it to a pollster. And so what they tell somebody on the phone or what button they click online when they're sending it into a campaign or to a super PAC or what have you or a political convention um, may not be the lever they ultimately pull on Election Day. Right. And uh, like, for example, I think there were a lot more people in the middle and even liberals who didn't like Hillary Clinton uh, who would have told you till they were blue in the face that they would never elect President Trump, and when push came to shove, they voted for him. Yep. And that's the fair. And maybe we still wouldn't admit it to this day. You know, they just go like because I knew a lot of people in in my area. You know, I live in a very red. We've talked about this a lot. I, I live in a very red pocket, where, for example, the the mask debate feels a lot louder. Um, <laughs> of course, it does. on my Facebook because you know. Whereas it's a you know the seventy five twenty five argument around the country, it's probably closer to fifty five forty five in my neck of the woods. Mm-hmm. Well, and uh, <clears throat> as a result, Ventura County is one of the fastest rising uh, COVID counties in the state. So there you have that. There's that, yeah. <laughs> I mean, no mask, okay, but yet your your uh, rate is going through the roof, okay? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's wild. Even you know, like I go play golf, and admittedly, I take my ma- I only wear my mask really in the pro shop because you know you're you're not riding around in carts right. with strangers and things like that. But like I was playing up in Santa Barbara on Saturday with a buddy of mine, and this random guy that we got paired up with to go play, he saw some people he knew, and he goes running down the hill and hugs all five of them, and I'm just sitting there thinking to myself. What in the ever loving fuck are you doing? <laughs> like, no, we don't do that right now. <laughs> like, I didn't know the guy, so I couldn't scold him. But had that been one of my friends and I'd seen them do that, I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Some people don't think, dude. Dr. Fauci would slap the taste out of your mouth. Well, that, not the Fauci now, to conservatives now is a fraud. Oh, Jesus Christ, stop that. You you saw that stuff I posted from, like, the Israeli uh, Public Policy Institute yeah. uh, about how how da- just how dangerous that misinformation is, mm-hmm. whether it is the shit about Bill Gates wanting to colonize Africa with vaccines or that, fa- look, there's very legitimate complaints that could be made about the CDC and the FDA and maybe some of their entanglements with the pharmaceutical industry or the medical device industry or the uh, health insurance industry, you know, any of these things. But at the end of the day, the people doing the talking are honest to goodness researchers that just want to make people get better. They're not the bureaucrats. They're not the ones who negotiate these deals. They're just the doctors trying to help people get better. And Regardless of where you fall on the political spectrum, number one, buying into like really obviously disgusting misinformation and really easily demonstrably false misinformation is incredibly dangerous. It's incredibly disrespectful. And I've said this before. I'll say it again. I may have even said it the last time we were on the show. You know, there's that Ben Franklin quote of question everything that's like the go-to of all these uh, truthers and conspiracy theorists and tinfoil hat fucking morons. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's like, great, question everything. But at the end of the day, look around the world, do a tally of developed countries. The ones who are listening to the public health experts and the doctors are winning, and the ones who are not 
Sweden, the United States, and Brazil are the first three who come to mind, are losing. And it's really as simple as that. Schools are opening in Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, Germany, the Netherlands, Belgium, France, like all these places. Italy is mostly reopened despite their horrific outcomes early on in the in the outbreak. And it, it, this lack of leadership, this lack of centralized messaging, and this permitting of disinformation to be treated as reasonable discourse and countervailing opinion is is literally costing us lives. You know, Dr. Fauci had some of the early models from, I want to say, February, March, were saying that if we had, or that if we really follow all the, inst- all the instructions and do everything the doctors are telling us to do, we could limit total deaths to 60,000. Well, we've blown past that, and we're going to hit 150,000 this week. This was preventable. Yeah. Thousands of people were going to die. Hundreds of thousands of people are now going to die. And that's horrifying. Is that, not like a, I, I, I've been it. saying, <clears throat> yeah, I've been saying since March that by the time this is done, COVID in America will end up claiming more lives than World War II. And we're well on our way. It was roughly, I think, 219,000 people were killed in World War II in the mm-hmm. entirety of both theaters of war. So it was like 219 or 223, somewhere right around there, 225 or less. Um, we're going to be at 250,000 probably by the end of the year. And they make it worse, too. That's the worst part. That's what I'm saying. Is like we're more than halfway through the year, and it could be 250,000 by New Year's. By the time the ball drops on 2021, it could be upwards of 250. Unless, especially as, you know, the worst of it hasn't really hit the rural states yet. States with the lowest per capita income, the states with lowest per capita access to health care, the lowest per capita participation in a health insurance exchange of any kind. Um, states like Louisiana, Arkansas, Missouri, uh, Tennessee, Kentucky, Georgia, Mississippi. You know, you, you're starting to see it in, in places like Georgia, but the worst of it hasn't hit. And that's where you're going to see these percentages, like infection rates, um, morbidity and mortality rates. It's, it's, we're far from, the, the worst is far from behind us. It's sad. It's it uh, really is. I mean, I'm already, it's and right here in Florida, we're, we're getting it bad right now. Oh, your governor is driving me fucking crazy. I got people here set, you know, paying airplanes to drag banners, calling Gavin Newsom gruesome Newsom and all this shit. And look, it stands to reason your numbers are going to go down. You're going to make mistakes. Things are going to go wrong. It's a fucking pandemic, and you're getting no federal support in the largest state in the country. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, the guy's listening to the public health experts. He's listening to the doctors. He's responding to the numbers. He, you know, he buckled to some of the pressure to reopen and immediately is going, whoa, no, we need to dial this shit back. Never should have done that one. So what do you, what, what do you, where do you stand on, on, on how to handle it? What do you stand on the whole thing? Because it's, it's a twofold question. It's a twofold answer in my, in my, in my opinion. <clears throat> I think Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and the Democratic leadership in Washington need to quit sitting on their hands and quit compromising, quit kicking the can down the field on relief and start forcing Mitch McConnell to have to go back to his voters and Tom Cotton and all these other people to go back to their voters and say that they care more about corporate liability um, from the pandemic for sending people back to work in unsafe environments than about relief for people who are sick. I think it's time to hold the Trump administration to account for the fact that they're literally suing with Republicans and Congress's backing um, to obliterate provisions of of Obamacare that would cost millions of people or kick millions of people off their health insurance right now. 
in the midst of a pandemic. Like that shit is disgusting. And I think Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and a lot of the older Democratic leadership in uh, <clears throat> Steny Hoyer, all these all these leaders in, in in Washington need to start taking more pages out of AOC and Bernie's playbook and hold their feet to the fire. Well, you know, Steve right. Mnuchin was just out there today proposing all kinds of, it, 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 like, basically saying, how are we going to pay for this shit when, you know, just a couple of years ago, they were telling us how there was going to be so much growth in the economy that it was going to pay for the one and a half trillion dollar hole that they blew in the deficit by giving uh, tax, uh, corporations and billionaires tax cuts, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So now it's time. For, it now it's time for like Nancy and Chuck to hold their receipts up and be like, you know what? Enough is enough. No, no more compromise. No more liability shield. No more of this shit about four hundred dollars a month. We need to get people through this. We need to act now. And if you don't want to <clears throat> act, I'm gonna hold you to that shit in November. And we're not compromising and letting you run a bunch of ads saying how you work to save the people. I saw when you haven't done shit. I saw today um, that the GOP sent a proposal apparently for the unemployment is two hundred dollars. Yeah. They were talking about four hundred dollars a month uh, at the end of last week, uh, and then Steve Mnuchin was saying something over the weekend uh, backing that up. Four hundred dollars a month. Well, four well, well four hundred dollars a month doesn't make, is not terrible when you consider that it's four hundred dollars a month plus your unemployment in, in the state. That's what one trip to that's one trip to Costco for your family. Well, I mean, it, well, you, no, I mean, rim, you're in California, though, so you're, <laughs> I mean, you, everything in California is fucking expensive, so that's also be a little realistic. No, too, but especially. I mean, look, $400 granted, no one is going to shake a stick at that. No one, no one's going to poo poo $400 coming right to them. But the point is, for people whose hours have been obliterated, for people like us who work in the hospitality industry, whose, whose companies and their futures are, shaky at best um you know marriott international has furloughed like double digit percentages of their corporate staff i'm not talking like housekeepers and uh front desk agents and servers and bartenders they've all been canned too you you know yes Mm -hmm. but these are you know senior manager and higher level positions so directors senior directors vice presidents um, people who make a couple hundred thousand dollars a year easily um, are furloughed, if not laid off, at a lot of the big hotel brands. Like this, you know, it's bad. And four hundred dollars is an insult to those people, especially when President Trump likes to get up there and pontificate about the hospitality industry and how much he cares about the service industry because of blah 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 blah. All the obvious well, reasons the, for the fact. The, when the fact is, like, that right. those of us that are real hoteliers know how full of shit he is. The argument, though, against uh, – the argument for lowering mm-hmm. the number, obviously, is because of the fact that it's incentivizing people to want to work. Well, yeah, which is horseshit in and of itself because all this is doing is – if you're do- – so if you look at the Republican proposal, the most – and Mitch McConnell has said this repeatedly – is that the number one priority is unlimited liability protection for corporations who – Basically, to insulate them from getting sued by their employees if they compel their employees to go. So basically, it's liability protections for companies to either force their employees to return to work in unsafe conditions and then not be sued when their suit, you know, when the employee tries to seek retribution for negligence in that case, or say wrongful termination when they refuse to return to work and they're fired by their employers. So that's Mitch McConnell's number one priority. In addition to a $500 billion relief fund that goes to the largest, you know, couple hundred corporations in the country. This isn't even going to management companies like mine that make 40, 50 million dollars or excuse me, that are responsible for like 40, 50 million dollars a year in hotel revenues. Like this isn't going to us even this is going to his friends. 
This is going to the Waltons. This is going to a Home Depot. This is going to, you know, luxury brands. This is going to the airline industry. And with no restrictions to stop it from going to CEOs and senior VPs who lay off hundreds of people to save the balance sheet or thousands of people to save the balance sheet. It's really fucking disgusting and transparent. And Nancy and Chuck need to do something about it. Say so we're not letting you do this. They need to whip their they need to whip their members into shape, not let Democrats creep over to the other side in the House. They need to hold the line and and force Mitch McConnell to have to go back to the, the voters and the other people who are up very important Senate seats like in Arizona to go back to their, their, their constituents and say, No, your employers' rights were more important to us than yours. Have you seen uh, the, the the polls on the McConnell race in Kentucky? Uh, on the latest, like McGrath McConnell. No, I haven't. But we were talking, and I had real clear politics pulled up, so I can switch it over from. Yeah, all right. If you want to do that, yeah, right ahead. Yeah. Let's look at the Kentucky Senate race. Oh, so, mm-hmm. oh wait, no, top Senate races. They don't have Kentucky on here. Where the hell is it? Okay, help me out. Okay. What are what are the numbers showing right now? I'm checking right now. Give me one quick second because I I had up oh, earlier. Oh, here's the RCP Senate map. Let's see. Oh, you here's Kentucky. Okay, current polling. <laughs> Do the live radio. I it, oh, like I'm looking for every like. There's all this stuff, and there's a picture of Amy McGrath and a picture of Mitch McConnell, and there's all these numbers on the screen, but not one of them are the polls. For like how their race is actually shaping up. Yeah, it's crazy. Hold on, Senate races. Here we go. Senate now, races. Mitch McConnell does have a 51% un- national unfavorability rating, so that's a good sign. They're not. They're not showing Kentucky at all. Senate races. They're not showing it at all. There's no data on it whatsoever. Yeah, okay. Okay. So, that's fucking, that's uh, fucking weird, isn't it? No, it's going to be shown some data. Yeah, you would think that's on. Uh, you you'd think that would be on real clear politics, but apparently not. That feels fishy. I don't know why. Am I my my uh, wrong for saying that? No, it's probably just something that like a lot of the national media doesn't pick up, <clears throat> and uh, and it's like on the. Lexington local news, you know, NBC affiliate. Oh, here we go. 538 has it. Okay. Shoot. Let's see. It's thir- oh, 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 boy. The latest, uh, the latest uh, 538 average shows McConnell up 22 points in Kentucky. Wow. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. Was that a close race before, though? Uh, I thought it was, but yeah, polling, uh, polling in Kentucky showing, uh, showing July 11th through the 16th, 2020 through Spry Strategies has McConnell up 22 points and Trump up 27 in Kentucky over Biden. Wow. So no chance he's winning that. Wild. <laughs> wow. No chance he's, oh wow. Look, this is crazy. Oh. I don't know. No kidding. Well, I mean, the priority is getting Trump out of there, I guess, right? More than else. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, what are what is your prediction for who uh, Biden's going to select as his VP candidate? Whew. I feel like, somebody, like <sighs> I think like somebody, 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 from, somebody through the Florida lens. Somebody we, we don't know. Somebody that's not not nationally, you know, like. People say, oh, come on, uh, Elizabeth Warren or Kamala no, Harris? No, not anymore, no. Because those are, that's what all the all the numbers and, like, you know, the betting odds suggest. Elizabeth Warren is the favorite right now. Still? Because, yeah, uh, I was actually, Mehdi Hassan was just talking about this. He was on uh, Pod Save America, and I wanted to, I haven't pulled up the page, but uh, I want to say 538 was showing it. But, uh, uh, oh, they don't have it as one of their lead it was one of their obvious filters, and I didn't pull it up on a separate page, so I'll spare it. But, um, no, I guess Elizabeth Warren is still leading and likely polling. And as, like, Democrats who are undecided of whether or not to vote for Biden, their first choice is Elizabeth Warren. And apparently 
<coughs> Elizabeth Warren's policies actually pull better among black people than, uh, say, Senator Harris. Mm -hmm. uh, because of her prosecution record and her more moderate stance on a lot of policy. So uh, it sounds like Elizabeth Warren is still the leader. My personal pick, like I've, I've responded to three or four different uh, Joe Biden campaign uh, survey requests mm -hmm. on the vice presidency, and I've, I ride hard for Stacey Abrams. I'd like she, to see, yeah, well, she ain't uh, got that. She ain't ready yet. You don't think so to be vice president? Well, I think part of the consideration <clears throat> is that whoever the vice president is has to be somebody that could be the president right away well, right like tomorrow if, if necessary and that's where i think senator harris or senator warren outpaced stacy abrams but i still think that the pathway to the white house for the democrats is going to be the fight against voter suppression mm-hmm and that Stacey Abrams is the running mate best poised to help wage that war and then to continue that presiding over the Senate and helping to whip legislation that will, you know, reinforce the Voting Rights Act, reinstate the Voting Rights Act and and help secure voting rights. Um, more meaningfully and in a more, I don't want to say permanent, but in a, in a longer lasting sort of way that, you know, where at least this doesn't come up again for a couple of decades, maybe. Right. <clears throat> well, we'll see. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm really curious um, with how that goes. I, I mean, any, 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 I mean, any day now we'll know, right? Any day now. I got to think it's this week or next, right? Cause the camp, the, the, the convention was supposed to have been this week, wasn't right. it? Yeah. So they're doing a they're doing a virtual convention, and I imagine during those Zoom festivities, we'll find out who Pres uh, VP Biden's. Uh, I gotta tell you though, this whole, this whole thing right now, this whole thing having a virtual, you know, and not having to campaign as much, this is perfect for Biden, perfect for him. Sure, he's the only one that it really bodes well for of the like when we look at looking back on the twenty people who ran for president officially for the Democratic nomination. Um, this, I mean, outside of maybe Bernie, there's nobody that has the name recognition to be able to nationally, and especially in the swing <clears throat> states, be able to sit at home and do Skype calls from their basement <clears throat> and and be in the position that they're in. Well, not only that, though, too, but also just the wear and tear of being on, on the campaign trail for months on end. Biden is seven, eight years old, obviously. You know, mm -hmm. to him having to, having to go anywhere, you know, it helps him out physically, too. Absolutely. Which, well, which, and which, actually, which, that, which, which could play in a conspiracy. Really now, but... hurts, it hurts President Trump, too, because oh, where, yeah. like, the thing that, I, I mean, and I, you know, quote unquote, the thing that he's quote unquote best at um, is is the rally. Yeah, it's, it's whipping up the base and trying to scoop some extra people into that mm -hmm. with some outrage that gets thrown out into the you know the more moderate discussion spheres, and him not being able to do that, uh, I think I think you know, at compounds that advantage that Biden has. I will say the fact that he canceled the uh, convention, the, the the Jacksonville portion, that's <laughs> that's. that's that I mean, weird. what choice did he have, though? Yeah, but still, I mean. I mean, the mayor of Jacksonville, and I mean, basically everybody except the governor of Florida was like, "This is a terrible idea. Don't do it." Please, like the people, the I think it was the county board of supervisors and the mayor of Jacksonville were like, "Please, for the love of God, don't do this to us." So like, we're Republicans. We voted for you. Do not do this. So I um, I've been, I've been doing this podcast last couple of weeks now, doing my uh, my Donald Trump um, election chances percentage wise. So last week I had it at thirty five percent. I'm, I'm gonna put mine right now at forty percent. I'm, I'm gonna raise it a little higher now at forty percent, only because you you mean Donald Trump being reelected? Yeah, forty percent chance of him being reelected. I've got it at forty seven percent, down <laughs> from fifty two percent. No, I'm, I'm at forty percent only because he's able he's been able to stabilize. I have to give him credit. 
<clears throat> I mean, very late, obviously, in the game doing this, but he, he has looked and sounded presidential the last week. <laughs> oh, ass. my God, don't even do – no, Ernest, you know, don't you No, 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 I'm not giving don't him credit. You... He's, he, no, no, Mark. The reason he's doing this I now, know, I he know now the recognizes. To make, and I he recognizes. Have to, I have to he recognizes answer. now that. <laughs> no, but I think now he recognizes that. Uh, yeah, I'm in deep shit now. I think reality hit, hit him. I, last yeah, week. I don't don't <clears throat> give him any more credit than his due. This is I don't, know, I don't, I, I don't know if I, call, I don't know if I call it credit. Let me say that though. Yeah, this is one hundred percent narcissistic. This is. Like him <clears throat> being calm and reserved tastes like vinegar in his mouth. He doesn't oh, want to no, no. do we, it we get, oh, because yeah, we know the we know the truth. I'm, 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 I know the truth. I'm, I'm not even saying he's doing this because this is how he really. Feels. No, I know. I just I want to for, for let the record reflect. <laughs> I mean, this is optics. This is only optics. Yeah, and it's still just <clears throat> so bad. Like, I, I think the list of countries we're allowed to travel to is down to like twelve or fifteen, something yeah. like that. Who would have thought Americans can't go anywhere? Who would have thought? We don't want you here. Really? You don't, Western you Europeans of uh, the last 25 years got their wish. They, didn't want, they, they, <laughs> they hate they, Americans. They, they don't want our money. We want your money. Well, they do. They do. They just don't want to put up with what, it, what, is, required of our, what is required of us in order to get our money. Yeah, good point. So I'm gonna put mine at. They 40%. want. Uh, they we uh, American like the for example the French and Italian tourism industries are in deep shit without American without American tourism dollars. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna like put that is still <clears throat> a, that is still a huge chunk of their of their revenue. So you say 47 percent down from 52 percent. I'm gonna go 40 percent up from 35 percent. Oh no, yeah. I, I think I think this thing's still gonna be a hell of a lot closer than Oh yeah. I, I mean unless unless Trump just completely spins out of control and like says the quiet thing out loud that you just really it, it, he accidentally says like I don't wanna do this anymore. Mm-hmm. Like he says it on a hot mic and it gets picked up or something. Like short of that, I there's nothing there's very little <clears throat> Um, that can conv- like they, that I'll be like, oh, yep, that's it. It's over. <laughs> it's all Biden. You, you know, like yeah. the, the man has been credibly accused of committing almost two dozen various acts of sexual assault, rape, sexual harassment, and none of it sticks. Like, just yeah, I none credit, of man. It he's sticks. good at shit, dude. He's good at, at, at swerving. Well, I think he's also benefiting from an unusually high period of corruption. And, you, you know, this pe- the pendulum between, like, corruption and fairness swings back and forth a great deal throughout our history, whether it was, you know, prior to the Great Depression and the course corrections that came thereafter mm-hmm. and, and, be- and before. Um, we're at a time when, like 1928, corruption is is winning the the tug of war right and we're at a tipping point where either corruption is going to win and we're in some serious shit relative to climate change and a variety of other threats over the next you know four to four to ten years or you know virtue will win the day and will begrudgingly elect the old white guy that at least doesn't give that at least gives a shit if we all perish <clears throat> like, I, like I said on social media yesterday, I just I, I just want government in the background at the end of the day, and it's not. Yeah, I, ju- I I want deep state people back in deep state places because if the Trump administration should have taught Americans anything, it's that shaking it up and letting an outsider be president is a terrible fucking idea, and you need a professional diplomat, statesman, or woman. You know, somebody that really knows how to run a government and the abject failure of the Trump administration to do so at every possible turn. I agree. um, Should should show Americans a great deal. Right. A great deal more than it seems they have. Right. Have you been watching the uh, the John Lewis uh, tributes? Uh, briefly, it, the truth be told, I played a shit ton of golf this weekend, so I missed a lot of the television coverage pertaining to it. It's a lot of it, though. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, 
Uh, the one thing I did notice is that, you know, there's a lot of brouhaha surrounding the fact that President Trump is not going to be going to, you know, pay his respects to Congressman Lewis as he lies in state at the U.S. Capitol. And to that, I kind of say, well, who the fuck wanted him there? Yeah. Um, I'm, sure the, I'm sure the congressman doesn't. <laughs> you know, th- to be honest with you, though, like, like, like I, th- th- this doesn't sound really fucking bad, though. Like, I got, you know. It, it fits the narrative. He's petty as shit. Well, you know? yeah, but even, like, the egregiousness of his racism is so, like, the degree of how the fuck did you, like, the degree of who raised you I don't even, I don't, that I don't, Trump has I don't taken think, his racism but to? I don't even think this is racism, it, on, but, but Mark, he, honestly, though, like, I don't think this is racism, to be honest with you. I, I think this is him being Trump, being, well, fuck you, no, no, me. No, 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 I, I, it's, no, dude, I think, you know what I think it is? It's that, and maybe you can maybe you can speak to this, but it's something that I've observed just sort of in my travels. Is like there's two very different kinds of call it three different kinds of racism that exists in the eastern part of the United States. Mm-hmm. There's like the southern racism, which we all talk about, which is the like surface level sugar coating of shit you say at home and with your white friends, but you smile and nod and everybody like puts on a happy face out in public. There's that. And then there's like the, the whole, you know, closed off parishes and counties clan element of it. But, you know, New York is a complicated mix in that there are a whole bunch of people like president Trump who um, come from certain backgrounds. One of the ones I find to be most interesting is Italian Americans. And I was talking with one of my friends about this, who's an Italian American from Jersey and has mm-hmm. a lot of Italian family in, in the tri state area. Is that like Italians only became white, quote unquote, in the last like two, three generations, basically since the Godfather made being Italian cool. <laughs> interesting. Prior to. Prior to the 70s, Italians were treated like black and brown people, and somehow they made this, like, transition over the line from, like, people of color to white people. But when you look back at the treatment of Italians, particularly throughout the early 20th and 19th centuries in this country, it's every bit as terrible as Jews, almost as bad as, you know, pretty much there's – when you look at – We've talked. I think we've talked about this before, like sort of tongue in cheek, but like the oppression power rankings mm-hmm. is like it's it's, <laughs> it's sort ranking. of like Jew- Jewish <clears throat> and black folks are just sort of on a different level, mm-hmm. and then there's a and then there's everybody else. Yeah, but when you talk about that group of everybody else, like Italian Americans have spent a lot of time, you know, more of their time in the American experience than not as a part of that group, and that's the point I'm trying to make. Right. There is something that comes from – it's an old political tactic, particularly in the colonial West, of like big whites, small whites, and and, and black and mixed populations uh, where the big whites in power use racial animus to whip up the small whites who really have a lot more in common – with their brethren of color Mm -hmm. in terms of, like, their American experience. Right. And when I say this American experience, this is a universal thing that has existed over the last 400 years, whether your colonizer was British, French, or Spanish, or Portuguese. Right. Um, Americans in Haiti, Americans in Guatemala, Americans in the United States, and I say Americans in that sort of continental, broad way, have all experience this social dynamic whereby the big whites uh, use racial animus to whip up the small whites and and create this false sense of superiority in order to wield control. And New York is a great example of that. And President Trump is sort of like if that awful blue-collar small white person from the docks who's been historically felt like they were wrong, like that guy from Long Island or Staten Island or, you know, parts of New Jersey. Uh, President Trump has sort of become this mouthpiece for that, like, 
that aggrieved person, and it makes no sense. But the point is that black and brown people are there to hold doors open for you, hand you towels and bathrooms, clean your house, cook your food, deliver your food. And while you certainly wouldn't call them an N-word to their face or advocate for their lynching, you certainly aren't going to be too thrilled about them, you know, coming home with one of your children or, you know, having any semblance of equality or equity in this country. Right. So it's a really, it, you know, when you look at like the iceberg of racism, the very tip of the shit that is out above the surface is, you know, police officers with their knees on George Floyd's neck and lighting of crosses, but there's this huge iceberg under the surface right. um, that is a much more complicated, gray, constantly swirling iceberg of racism. And I think that's really where the president falls. And he says the quiet thing out loud when he dog whistles shit like Charlottesville and other similar instances. But I don't think, you know, look, going back to, going back to his unapologetic position on the Central Park Five, which was like 1989 when he took out a full-page ad in the New York Times calling for them to receive the death penalty and refusing to walk it back when it was like concretely proven that those boys were innocent and had been the victims of an awful miscarriage of justice to this day. Um, he has not, you know, sort of um, evolved on his position surrounding the Central Park Five. Right. It, he was sued and lost, you know, for um, racial discrimination in housing practices. He and his father, his grandfather was a was, you know, a t proven was arrested at a Klan, at a Klan rally that turned violent in the 20s. Like this is shouldn't surprise anyone and like stop making excuses for it or saying like it's, you know, it's one thing or it's something else. The president's racist and he's done everything but call, you know, black and brown people the worst derogatory names on camera. Oh, well said. Um, so, so, so your boy Lou Williams. <laughs> <laughs> nice swerve, huh? <laughs> oh, my God. The strip you club. made me so happy as we turned from something, like, so seriously serious. upsetting to something so hilarious, both as a Laker fan, as a basketball fan, and just as a human. <laughs> Was it really dinner, though? Was it really dinner? Yeah. <laughs> so if I understood the story correctly, because Shannon Sharp covered it so nicely this morning on, uh, on Undisputed. Uh, I forget the name of their show. Undisputed. Uh, Undisputed, right? Yeah. Undisputed? Skip and Shannon, Undisputed. Yeah, okay, cool. The one with that other guy who drives me crazy. Skip Billis. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, Skip Billis. Uh, but no... So my understanding is that Lou Williams had like a very serious and legitimate family reason for departing the NBA bubble. And then while outside the bubble and in Atlanta, he was just like sucked in tractor beam to the strip club. Is that just, is that what I'm understanding? Yes, like the more or less. Has, the strip club has like a section named after him, and he just couldn't say no. <laughs> well, if, if, if you they know, have like a, they have like a kind of chicken wing named after him or something. I forget what it is. The thing is, knowing Lou Williams, you know, having multiple girlfriends at the same time, and they all acknowledge it. Like this is not, this is not, this is part for the course. But you know, what's also the most clipper thing in the world. <clears throat> They're just lucky they don't need because him. Here, what's just, that? They're just lucky they don't need him for the next 10 days. Right? Well, and I mean, you think about this. You know, this is probably outside of, you know, the inception of Lob City, the best chance that the Clippers have to uh, get to the finals and potentially win a championship now mm -hmm. with, you know, Kawhi and Paul George and Doc and everything. Mm-hmm. And it's like the Lakers signed Dion Waiters, DeMarcus Cousins, while he's not with the franchise right now. I'm confident he'll probably get re-signed this summer if his health, if his health holds up. Um, but the Lakers signed J.R. Smith and Dion Waiters, two quote-unquote known head cases. And it's, you know, consummate six-man of the year, 
locker room leader Lou Williams who's going to the strip club and getting quarantined and it's just it just makes me laugh because it's like the most Clippers shit ever and it's like the Lakers have they have their shit together they're playing for a purpose they're playing for Kobe and Gigi J.R. Smith is trying to like get the last gasp of basketball out of his career that he possibly can Dion wants to end on a high note like all these different things right yep and Everybody's focused. Everybody's locked in. Last couple of games, Lakers look pretty solid. J.R. Smith just came out today. He shot, I think, either five for six or four for five in their win over whoever the hell they play, Washington. Right. Um, but, yeah, he was like four for five or five for six with 20 points. So have fun at Magic City, bro. We're, we're winning championships for the Mamba and Gigi over here. Well, you, you know, and I talk, love yeah, go, and oh, I love. I, that's a little no, sort of the cocky Laker fan. I like that. The, you know, that's the locked-in mentality I see when I look at the Lakers. And obviously I see the coverage of both teams because they both have a local network right, here. Right, of course. It's like when you – the Clippers are just kind of like happy to be here and Kawhi's focused, but the Lakers all seem to be playing with one purpose. Right. Okay, last thing let you go. Um, <clears throat> we had an outbreak in baseball. Maybe baseball came out this weekend, and there's an outbreak already. Um, yesterday. The most Miami Marlins thing <sighs> to happen Christ. to baseball since. So it was what? It was, God, in no, it was whatever the fuck they did well, last season. <laughs> it, it was, yeah, it was in Philadelphia, right? It happened, right? Was it Miami? It was. Uh, in, well, it was in, no, was it twenty-seven players on the Marlins? Have no, 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 no. Uh, but, but diagnosed with corn. No, 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 no. What I'm, what oh, I'm saying it occurred. To you, you're saying it occurred in the city of Philadelphia, right? Got it. I believe it. it was what they 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 played, they played the Phillies in Philly right this weekend, right? I'm not mistaken. Uh, maybe. Yeah, that's that's entirely possible. Yeah, so obviously the Marlins game got canceled down here in South Florida. I love I love baseball, but I I can be I can't be uh, I can't lie. I'm not watching a a Marlins Phillies uh, <laughs> COVID game. No, and then of course the Yankees got postponed. The Phillies game because the Yankees got postponed today. Um, major outbreak in baseball. You know. I, I I said today, this is bad news for football, because it's not about the product on the field; it's the whole traveling from stadium to stadium, or from arena to arena. Yeah, and that's what, the issue. What, you what can't did I say? This. Basketball. What did I say on the last show? Basketball has a chance. Baseball, I don't think finishes, and NFL doesn't start. And the bubble is proving the key. Out of what was it, 316 players that underwent the first round of testing mm-hmm. since, like being released freely into the bubble, uh-huh. 316 tests, zero positive. Yeah, like guys, we don't know everything there is to know about this virus, but we know that listening to the doctors and following the very limited direction they do give us is working like to an extent it works you know we don't have anything better we can't like we have to isolate <clears throat> we have to stay the fuck away from each other it's just what it is i didn't you know mark i didn't account for this either i was saying you know i wrote a blog about a week ago i was saying no college football this year and if a chance oh hell no yeah uh, and if i was a chance because money will, will dictate that i thought the nba had bad options coming to this thing I thought baseball would make it. I didn't consider baseball and the traveling aspect until this weekend. Yeah, I I was surprised baseball didn't at least try to confine everyone to their spring training facilities. Good point. That would have seemed an obvious solution to me. Mm -hmm. And where, you know, you're in situations where, like, you could arrange – spring training facilities in such a way um, those are pretty built in and they're 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 all in areas where you also have a lot of hotel rooms and a lot of colleges that are all not getting used right now right whether it's in Florida or in Arizona so you have a lot of resources at your disposal here the only thing I can think of is that they don't want to be playing baseball outside around the clock in Arizona and Florida because like right now in Arizona it's 110 degrees during the day that's a good point 
So you got to do everything at night because it's literally 90 degrees at night. Mm Mm-hmm. And I don't imagine Florida is much better with the humidity. Oh, hell no, dude. It's bad. It's, it's hot and humid. So, you Ooh. know, that's the only thing I can think of that, like, why you wouldn't necessarily want to use spring training facilities. But, no, this this business about players continuing to travel and go to other stadiums, not being in a at least some, some kind of relative bubble, um, I don't think it's going to work. I, th- I think the NBA model is going to work because you have well, the as long smallest as they, squads, the smallest well, coaching staff. It's just too many people. That's the other thing with baseball and football. It's just too many people. Well, football, I think the Baseball NFL, teams are carrying 40-man rosters right now. And right. How many coaches do you have? How many trainers? Well, at least and like six or seven, Equipment right? people. Yeah, I mean, so you're talking about, what, 120 people when it's all said and done for a baseball team, maybe 100 people. Yeah. 200, 230 for a football team between the practice squad, all the other guys that you don't see. Like, how many guys do you see running around in shorts and T-shirts and sweats and golf shirts and shit during an NFL broadcast? Right. There's dozens of people just not doing anything but standing there and, you know, I, I think I, I do think money, because NFL is Prince Money, um, that will dictate what they do. Ultimately, it well, may, it, it may think, take it uh, may take the federal government stepping in to say no, no, no. Well, I don't think that's going to happen when you look at the, who the president is, at least until say January twenty first of twenty twenty one. Well, we'll see that. Oh, well, yeah. Um. However, um. I think, you know, we could see the NFL do some pretty horrid shit as far as not paying players and put players in really awful positions because overwhelmingly, for the same reason they can't get collective bargaining sessions and lockouts and strikes to work, guys can't, the 80% of the league can't afford to miss game checks. And if owners say, fine, you know, you don't want to play, you don't want to come back to practice, you don't want to do this, you don't want to do that, you're not going to get your game checks. No problem. Yeah, and then sure. you're going to have a situation where just like forced reopening, you know, money is driving the conversation and not health and 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 public health. I mean, there'll be a mutiny, of course, for that. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, and I think if finally in that situation you're going to see the stars kind of publicly band together and go, you know what? Nope. That ain't working. Mm-hmm. Sorry, guys. Jerry Jones and Dan Snyder and, you know, those of you at that end of the table, you guys can all go fuck yourselves. Uh, I think a few of those, I think, you know, Tom Brady comes forward and says, no, this is absurd. We're not playing under these conditions. Right. It, it, it's, it's, it's an acquired of stars speaking out, honestly. Yeah, that's the only Use way. Use your privilege, guys. You're going to get, yeah. <laughs> If it does, what do you think happens in the NBA? You think like Adam Silver is not stupid. If LeBron James and Chris Paul and and Carmelo Anthony start talking, and then now it's getting picked up by all their friends who are now at you know Fox and ESPN respectively, and they're saying that you know if 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 they all come out and say you know Adam Silver is an asshole for X Y Z reason. And then all their friends and former teammates are now picking this shit up at Fox and ESPN and Bleacher Report and putting it all over the, the place. And then it's getting picked up by all the aggregators. It's going to take all of 15 minutes for Adam Silver to stop being an asshole. Mm-hmm. That's because the stars speak out in the NBA. And I think the same is, you know, in a situation like this, it would not take much, it, like, for the floodgates to open. It wouldn't take but – Drew Brees to come out and say, excuse me, commissioner, excuse me, owners of these various teams, you and your plantation mentality have had your day and the shit ain't flying anymore right. for a lot of different reasons. It's going to change really quick. Yeah, I agree with you. A couple of golden boys, a couple of golden boys, particularly white quarterbacks come out and say some shit. It's going to change really, really quickly. I do agree with you. Anyway, Mark, it's a pleasure, man. It was good. That was that was fun. A lot of fun. 
<laughs> Let's just hope the the course of the news goes better. See what happens uh, over the next uh, hundred days. We'll have to should like check in in minimum like thirty day increments just to see. Oh, of course, like oh, yeah. almost how weird can the news get between now and election day? Well, just, just like we did like four years ago, we were doing this every every uh, every so often. So yeah, and, 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 and I do think also as you get closer, average. it'll probably do a couple weeks. Okay, uh, so you know, I'm cool. down. So. Obviously, my industry is not getting busier anytime soon. <laughs> Mine's not busy. Mine's open. Mine's not busy though. Mine is uh, very slow. Really? Are the are the like the card rooms quiet and stuff? Like yeah, people aren't I mean, just coming into play. I mean, I'm just glad we're making money, but uh, you know, this is one of those things. I mean, we still, you know, 90 percent of our staff is still laid off. Like we were just getting ready to start like considering opening our food and beverage outlets as reopening was beginning in California and just as quickly, you know, shit hit the fan and we went, yep, nope, that's not going to happen anytime soon. So I'm, I'm curious when oh, they're going to, I'm curious when, where we're going to be at next week or where we are at with the numbers. Are we starting to flatten yet? Are we still spiking? And that's, that's, that's what we're trying to find out. Uh, you know, I think that's a really good question for governors, Ducey, Abbott and DeSantis and Kemp. Those four, those four gentlemen uh, have have a lot to answer for in in their respective states. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's annoying as shit. <laughs> it's just annoying as shit. It really it is. It is, isn't it? I miss I miss going to a restaurant. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> Man, what I wouldn't give to just be able to go socialize. Like, although you know what, positive news on the on the vaccine front. There are some. Uh, there was just a story on ABC World News tonight uh, this evening. Uh, about some uh, progress on the vaccine front that there could be uh, getting through FDA approvals and, and releasing to market as early as uh, this winter. Cool. Just keep, so, wearing, just keep wearing your fucking mask. That's all I got to say. Yeah. Wear, mask. wear your mask, wash your hands, and stay the hell away from each other. Exactly. Stay home, stay home whenever humanly possible. Exactly. All right, Mark. We'll talk Jesus, soon. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Good evening. All right, buddy. Be good, man. Indeed, you as well. All right, later, man.